title is Odd Lewis Structures. So we're going to talk about Lewis structures that um, that don't follow the rules. So of course there's some exceptions uh, when we talk about when we talk about making Lewis structures. Okay, but there's not a lot of exceptions, so it's not too difficult. Uh, the reading that is uh, associated with this is pages 323 to 325 in your book. All right, you guys. So um, we're going to talk about three different kinds of odd Lewis structures. And the first one is an incomplete octet. So number one in our group of odd Lewis structures is this. Okay, so just like it says here, there are certain elements that um, are stable without a full octet. And we're not talking about hydrogen or helium that is stable with a duet, which is two valence electrons. So um, the ones that we need to keep in mind the most, that we'll see the most often, are beryllium, boron, and aluminum. All right, so let's do, let's do an example of, of one, uh, BF3. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is, uh, all right, so what's the Lewis symbol for boron? Um, boron has got how many valence electrons? Three valence electrons. One, two, three. So we've got one of them. So we've got three electrons coming from boron. And fluorine, the Lewis symbol for fluorine, fluorine has seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Okay, and we've got three of them. So we've got 21 electrons that we need to account for from fluorine. So that means, you guys, we've got a total of 24 electrons that need to be accounted for in our compound. All right, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, um, so I've got boron, which is my central atom, and I am going to put a pair of electrons as my bonded pair between each fluorine and the boron. Okay, what are the fluorines called again? They are called ligands. L-I-G-A-N-D-S. Ligands. Okay, so I've got my, my pairs in that are my bonded pairs. And I'm going to fill in now octet for fluorine and see where I'm at. So there, there, there. And then let's go ahead and count this thing up. Um, I need 24. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. All right, so all 24 of my electrons are accounted for. My fluorines all have a full octet. And that leaves me with the boron with only six. So we might think, oh, there, there's a problem there, but there is not a problem there, you guys, because boron can exist just fine with this incomplete octet with just six. Okay, so how am I going to make that structure? Um, I'm going to. Uh, how am I going to make this into a more proper Lewis structure? I'm going to get rid of the bonded pairs, and I'm going to turn those bonded pairs into lines. So I'm going to make it like this, just so it's not so busy. And there it is. There's my Lewis structure for boron trifluoride. Okay, the next group of odd structures. And again, you guys, we can have um, boron, beryllium, or aluminum with an incomplete octet. Okay, the next one um, is an odd electron. We're going to call it odd electron. And this really, you 
guys, is nitrogen being stable? Well, kind of, with seven electrons. They're actually pre-reactive molecules. They don't hang around for very long. Okay, so the two examples here where nitrogen is okay with seven electrons are nitrogen monoxide and um, nitrogen dioxide, NO2, or nitrous, not nitrous, nitric nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. Nitrous oxide, laughing gas, is not hot electron. There's nitrous, laughing gas, nitrous oxide. But we're not doing that right now because there's nothing odd about it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this with N O. Okay, um, so nitrogen is in group five. One, two, three, four, five. So, got five electrons from there. And oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. So, I have a total of 11 electrons that I need to count, account for in this molecule of um, nitric oxide, nitrogen monoxide. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we've got N and let's put in a bonded pair and now let's go to four. Okay, and what do I have here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Oh, I've got big problems here. So, let's see. What else can I do up here? So now, I've got too many, so I'm going to go double bond, right? Because that's my clue to go double bond. Sorry. Okay, so we still, we have eight, right? Two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, around the nitrogen. And I've got a total of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Uh, I've still got one extra electron. Okay, so this is how it's weird. Nitrogen is actually kind of okay with. Um, seven valence electrons. So you find nitrogen with seven valence electrons in this nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Now nitrogen dioxide actually is a molecule that um, it's brown and it is a large component of smog and it is highly reactive because okay yeah it's kind of stable but really, it would like to pick up another electron. So, uh, relatively unstable, both of these compounds. So, in this case, you guys, nitrogen is okay, okay, with seven electrons. Two, four, six, seven. All right, now the last one is the one that we are going to encounter the most. And that one's called an expanded octet. Okay, so number three is an expanded octet. Okay, and in an expanded octet, what we find is that the 3D, 4D, or 5D orbitals are used for bonding.
row two, period two, like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. And I'll talk about this again in class. Um, their valence electrons are in quantum level two. Does quantum level two have d orbitals? No. There are no d orbitals in quantum level two. So you will never see carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. You will never see them with an expanded octet because they don't have the quantum capacity to um, utilize d orbitals. Their valence is in quantum level two. Okay, um, so anything quantum level three or beyond. So let's look at an, at an example of this. For instance, um, let's do a Lewis structure for P phosphorus. I shouldn't say it like that. Phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus pentachloride. Alright, so first of all, phosphorus is in group 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I've got one of them, so that's 5 electrons that I have to account for from the phosphorus. Chlorine is a halogen in group 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 5 35 electrons I have to account for from the chlorine. So that means that in my final structure, you guys, I've got to have 40 electrons present. Now, the ligands always follow octet. Always follow octet. Ligands always follow octet. So they're never going to have more than eight electrons surrounding them. It is only the central atom that will expand and utilize their three, four, or five d orbitals to accommodate bonding. Okay, um, so let's go with this thing. I'm going to put phosphorus in the middle, my central atom, and then I'm going to go chlorine, Alright, for 
now that's good enough. And we'll make all kinds of Lewis 